is Maria Dante, and I'm going to show you so, um, how to make three-dimensional drawings. Just a very quick tip, nothing um, too long, just enough for you to perhaps start to get curious and start trying to make things look three-dimensional. Now, in art, a three-dimensional drawing or figure is usually something that looks like it's popping out at you. And that has space above, below, and around it. A lot of our drawings tend to be flat or two-dimensional. But sometimes, as an artist, you want things to look like they're coming right at you. So, go ahead and grab some piece of paper. Any paper will do. Any white paper. And a pencil. This is the first um, tip that I will share with you. And then we're going to draw something very special for Easter. So you take our paper and you do that pinch method, right? You're going to establish your horizontal line and your midline. Why do we do that? Just so that we have markers and uh, visually we know where to go, how our space is laid out in front of us. So first thing we're going to do is mark four and uh, three and three, and we can do four and four. And this time, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and draw a line and join these two points. Now, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to draw a line from here onto this point. This point. And from here onto this point. And that. All right. So right now, you have basically what looks like two triangles. But what would happen if I said, this could be a box. And I drew a line there. And I'd line over here. Oopsie. And then I went ahead and erased this line. And I erased this triangle. And then I told you that this could become a house. What you're going to do is, this is the midline. Anything that falls below this line is going to follow the direction of this curve or the angle of this line. So you go ahead and do that so that these two lines are parallel. Anything that you're going to draw from this line up is going to follow this angle. So if you're going to draw a window above that door, you are simply going to follow that line. It looks a little strange, but that would be realistically how it would look like. Because this is an invisible line and all the lines that you draw need to meet that vanishing point. <clears throat> Um, and then <clears throat> we could, I don't know, I'm going to leave that up there like that. But on this side, we could draw another window. This is a vanishing point. And then maybe we'll do a little window down here. And again, my vanishing point. But remember that this is from here down. So I'm going to go this way. And now I have created a building and I could do my sidewalk. And I could do, um, I could draw a tree up here. All right. Oh, uh, I could do a frame around my door and I could just go ahead and add all my details if I wanted to do that. So now you can tell that we have a building. It's not a square or triangles anymore. Um, this is gonna be our horizon line or a vanishing point line. And then we put a, a line right there. And that's it. It was a very simple, easy way of turning 
uh, or drawing like turning a square into triangle into a building um and you get better at it at this with time and practice so you could even do this here to make it look like it has but the top i would see the top and not the bottom right so you can go ahead and play around with that when you have time but what i really wanted to do today was um draw this now that you know how to give things a three dimension, instead of just drawing a flat cross, we're gonna draw a cross that has volume or three dimensional to it. So, um, start with your piece of paper and we're gonna be drawing a cross and of course it's the cross because and it's an empty cross because of the resurrection. So we're starting with um, a piece of paper. Put that over here. And you got it. We're gonna do those lines first of all. We do always do the lines. It's the first thing we do. Remember not to fold your paper because we don't want any um, marks on the space where we need to draw. You can gently press it, but I really would stay away from doing any type of crease on that paper. All right, so this is going to be our cross for Easter. Um, go ahead and very lightly dot it lines and dot it lines and starting from the top you can measure what I did here I did two fingers so I'm gonna do two fingers and then um, one finger from the bottom put one finger at the bottom and there is a certain proportion to a cross if you always notice the top is not as big or as long as the bottom This cross, I did one finger on each, on each side. You can use the pinky finger to make it narrower. It seems to be a little thick, but I wanted it to have a lot of volume. And then I did three fingers on each side. So you do three fingers on each side, and you're gonna just, for now, remember that we're just kind of marking our, our space. Excuse me. You're gonna do one line here and put a little dot there. And dot. And dot. And then we do want the cross to have the same uh, width, um, both directions, diagonal and horizontal. So you can go ahead and do that. And do fingers. And we measure with fingers because not everybody has a ruler and not everybody has a ruler at hand. And sometimes you might just wanna draw something and it's a good way to know that you can measure with your hands. So now we're gonna very carefully um, draw this line here and we're gonna bring that down very carefully. And the first time, just do it super light so that it almost looks like a very light, barely see it. And we do that because if we wanna erase something, it's super easy to erase. Right, so you have the two fingers, one finger, one finger. You have two, two dots. You're gonna continue this mark over here and stop where you have that line. Okay. And then now you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna carry this line all the way down, all the way down. So it almost reaches the bottom of the paper. All right, so you have a basic cross here. checking my measurements so the bottom is a finger and a half and the top is a finger and a quarter all right now for the fun part because now we're going to turn this into a three-dimensional cross it's going to really pop out so remember that other drawing that i showed you where i had all those 45 degree angles we're going to do that something very similar to this 
Every single corner is going to have a 45 degree line. And then you're gonna cross that. And these two things, two lines need to be parallel. These two lines need to be parallel. Here, we're gonna draw another 45 degree angle. We're gonna make sure that it stops right on time to meet this line coming down from the top. And then here, we're gonna have another 45, and this one's gonna go all the way up to meet that one. These two need to be parallel. Don't forget the edges, 45 degree, <clears throat> 45. And this is a tricky part. You're gonna have to skip this, but you can, you can skip it. Just don't draw hard on it. Go over it very lightly and meet down here and bring it all the way down. Oops, it's got a bump. You can erase it. Yay. All right, perfect. So we're gonna carry on over here, 45 degree angles. This have to be the same as this, so I'm gonna start here, float over my drawing, and go over here, 45, perfect. This, I need them to be the same. All right, so I have my four, like uh, my 45 or three-dimensional um, cross. And again, I think it would be a great idea if you wrote your favorite verse uh, from the Bible story, um, around it. I think it would really be pretty if you could just go ahead and do some nice lettering, but that's up to you. How you finish it is up to you. I just wanted to sort of share with you this tip of trying to make this uh, cross be three-dimensional. And as far as rendering or coloring it goes, you can pick um, any color you want, really. If it's a happy occasion, he says reason, so you can go ahead and draw a beautiful color uh, cross. I'm gonna pick purple, okay? Purple is the color of royalty. And the king has risen. You can go ahead and draw that. First, I'm notice that I'm outlining everything. And even though I did outline everything the same color, you will, don't have to. Obviously, these are the colors that you choose. You don't have to do purple cross. You can do any cross you want. Yellow, blue, and then we're going to. I think I'm going to do the the front purple. Remember to very lightly go in uh, little circles, almost like you were mixing eggs or pancake. Very lightly. Very, very light. I'm just gonna do up to here to show you how you can make some um, fun color choices. So you can go ahead and do yellow on the side. And, you know, I think I'm gonna do the top yellow as well. And there you have it. Finish up your rendering, and you're all set. Good job, everyone. See you later.